welcome everyone, brothers and sisters, to another beautiful day, a time in the presence of God. Welcome to this Surefire Life Conference, this platform the Almighty God has raised for us to make simple, clear, and available the Word of God. We're continuing with our Bible study on abiding in Christ. So, Heavenly Father, we hand over the study to you. We ask, teach us by your spirit. And let this word transform our lives. And let us glorify you. In Jesus' name we are praying. Welcome to the concluding part of this Bible study on abiding in Christ. Glory be to God. Our text is taken from the book of John chapter 15, verse 5. John chapter 15, verse 5. So we're going to take our text and then we will read the entire John chapter 15, 1 to the end. There are 27 verses, so we will ask four people this time to read very fast. Yeah, the first person will read six verse, the second person, the third, and then the last person will finish. Let's read John chapter 15, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Keywords, again, to pick out of there, fruit is singular. And it is he who abides in Christ that Christ abides in. Notice that he who abides in Christ is the one Christ abides in. Christ does not force himself to abide in anybody. He does not impose himself. It is your will. God has given mankind free will, free choices. God wants you to choose him and not the devil. He said to uh, the children of Israel, he said, I have set before you life and death. Choose life that you may live. Choose life that you may live. Praise the name of the Lord. So God has said before us the opportunity to abide in Christ. So Christ will abide in us. Or to reject him, the savior of mankind, of humankind, of the whole world. And of course, bear the consequence of our choices. That's the beautiful thing about life. It is all about choices especially with God. Choose life that you may live. Choose to abide in Christ, that Christ may abide in you. And as you abide in Christ, the result is obvious. You will bear much fruit. I will bear much fruit, singular fruit. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's do the Bible reading right away. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 27. John chapter 15, from verse 1 to 6, and I read, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he purchases, that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 3, mm -hmm. now ye are clean, through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and yes. I in you. Yes. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abides in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. Amen. Verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him the same brings forth much fruit. Much fruit. For without yeah. me, ye can do nothing. nothing. And for six, if a man abides in me, if a man abides not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Thank you. Next person, verse seven. John chapter 15 to 12, and he says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Eight, 
Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Nine, as the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Ten, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandment, and abide in his love. Eleven, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, mm-hmm. and that your joy might be full. Twelve, mm-hmm. this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Next person. John 15, verse 13. Greater love had no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. 14. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. 15. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, mm-hmm. but I have called you <clears throat> friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known to you. Mm-hmm. 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. 17. These things I command you, that ye love one another. 18. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated you before it hated you. Ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Amen. Amen. The last reader, read it all the way to the end. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I choose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will, they will keep yours also. But all, the, all these things they will do to you for my name's sake because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin, but now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause, but, when the helper comes whom I shall send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me and you will also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Yes. Praise the Lord. So we have been studying on abiding in Christ. I will share my screen and do a summary, quick summary before we take the discussion, your contributions. So we will move uh, far. So abiding in Christ, we dealt with the what. What does it mean? So this illustration Jesus used to teach us about the true vine family, that the true vine family involves the Father Almighty, his son Jesus Christ, and all those who abide in Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. That's the true vine family the family of God. And we came to the conclusion that abiding in Christ ultimately is about one's relationship with Christ and the Father, the Almighty God. Abiding in Christ is about one's relationship with Christ and invariably the Father. And that there are levels of relationship. Number one, which is indeed the relationship God expects all humankind to come into with him is the relationship of son or daughter of God. That is becoming a brother and sister of Jesus Christ, brother or sister of Jesus Christ. Important point to emphasize there that As we become brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, we become brothers and sisters of one another, isn't it? Oh, how beautiful would it have been if the whole world, everyone came into this one family and sees his brother, sees another human being as his brother, sees another human being as his or her sister. This is the life God intended and intends 
still today for all humankind through his son, Jesus Christ. Number two level of relationship is bride of Jesus Christ. This is very specific, bride of Jesus Christ. And number three is friend. And number four is servant. And we have made the point clear that a servant does not have abiding relationship with Jesus Christ, nor his son, because a servant is a stranger in the house. He doesn't belong to this family. So let's make that point clear. That's why in the point above, you've seen that the true vine family involves the Father, Almighty God, his son, Jesus Christ, and all those who abide in Christ. So really, the relationship is there. And you then, as a son or daughter, have to make yourself into a bride or an, a friend. And some people decide to make themselves servants, even after becoming a son. Galatians chapter 4. I, I feel led to read that right away because some people have just joined and such teaching may be sounding like what? Uh, so let's read it again. So you see, it's very evident in the Bible. Galatians chapter 4 from verse 1 to 7. I may not be able to read all. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, from a servant. Though he is master of all. I think I'll just leave it there. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, and we have said who a child is, a son or a daughter who has refused to grow up and therefore has to be managed, doesn't behave well, does not understand his right as a son or as a daughter, is unwilling to take responsibility, continues to be a child. That that child, even though is a heir, is not different from a servant because that person will have to be directed, guided, given everything that belongs to him or her. And when I see the way some Christians behave, especially because of the mentality of make it, make it, make it, rather than the mentality of understanding the principles of God, working, according to the principles of God. So God will bless our lives and take us to that height he has kept for us. I just wonder if truly we understand our position as a son or a daughter of God. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father, until that person grows up, becomes mature. I want to jump to verse four. Look at verse four. He said, but when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a servant. You are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God, the one whom everything God has belongs to, joint heir with Christ Jesus, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 17. And heir of God through Christ, praise the name of the Lord. I think it will be incomplete if I don't immediately read Romans chapter 8, verse 29 again. So we remember Romans chapter 8, verse 29. It says, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Who is this, his son? Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So what is the Bible saying here? What is the Bible saying here, rather? The Bible here is saying that God foreknew you, foreknew me, and has predestined us to be made, be conformed in the image of Jesus Christ, his son, to be made in the image of Jesus Christ, in the image of his son. 
that he, Jesus Christ, might be the firstborn. So he is the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. We are the brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ as sons and daughters of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So levels of relationship, son, daughter, who are brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, sons and daughters of God who are brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, and bride of Jesus Christ, friend. Of God and of his son Jesus Christ, but some will reduce themselves to a servant because a servant can abide in the house. You know, I mean, can dwell in the house, yes, can abide in the house, but doesn't abide in the house forever. I think you see that in John chapter 8, I believe from verse 41, and thereabout. So we also then went on to the why. Why is it important to abide in the vine? It is not optional, but mandatory for there is no other way to live. There is no other way God has provided for human beings to live than to abide in the vine who is Jesus Christ, the true vine, the one who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. John chapter 14, verse 6. Whoever does not abide in the vine will be cut off and burned in the fire. Whether you believe there is hellfire or not, that's up to you. But please study the Bible. One thing I know is that God will judge the wicked, and the wicked will be punished. And here the scripture says, in where we read John chapter 15, that we read. Look at verse 6, John chapter 15, verse 6. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. You may have various interpretations of what this means. As I always tell people, I say, yes, we like interpretations. But why don't you at least first start with taking what the Bible says? Clearly, those who don't abide, and this corroborates with a lot of other scriptures, we don't have time to go into that, that Jesus Christ taught and shared. Those who don't abide in Christ will be cut off, they will be thrown into the fire, and they are burned. So importance of abiding in Christ, therefore, are listed. Not exhaustive, but these are the big hitters. If you focus on these and let this drive your life as the objective that you lead. Number one, bear much fruits. There will be a much fruit. There will be a much fruit, 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 fruit. Singular, bear much fruit which, as we have said, is the sum total of your life, the sum total of your purpose. You will fulfill all that God created you to be, to do, to have in this life if you abide in Christ. That's number one. Bear much fruit. It will manifest in achievements and fulfillment of God's will and purpose in life. Jesus Christ knew his purpose, knew his objective. And he stated it clearly, he said, to do your will, I have come. In the volume of the books, it is written of me. That was a prophecy concerning him. And when he prayed at Gethsemane, you remember, he said, if it is your will, let this cup pass away from me. He said, but he knew, he knew, he said, but I know your will, I'm just paraphrasing, but I know your will, <laughs> I know your will, so Father, let your will be done, and God's will was done, he laid down his life for you and me, today, by his sacrifice, we have been adopted to be sons and daughters of God, number two, you will do the works of Christ. John chapter 14, verse 12. He said, greater works than these you will do. I will do. We will do. 
Jesus Christ, preach the kingdom of God, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, and live righteously, live perfect, and died and rose from the dead. So the same way you will fulfill everything, do all he has done, and he is actually the one still working his will, the will of God through us. And we also will resurrect from the dead like he has done. For he is the firstborn among many brethren. Hallelujah. Number three, you will have access to divine information through secrets. And that depends on the level of relationship you develop as we will see. Number four, you gain eternal life, the resurrection of the dead that we have just talked about. If this does not excite you to abide in Christ, I wonder what else excites you in life. You want to achieve greatness in this life? Abide in Jesus Christ. I know you will say, ah, there are many rich people. They don't even know Jesus. Enter their life and find out how miserable they are and how sorrowful they are. There is no joy, there is no peace. And there is no guarantee of eternal life. It's only in Jesus Christ there is guarantee of eternal life. The Bible says it very clearly. Uh, in John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus is the savior of all humankind, irrespective of religion, tribe, um, ethnicity, affiliations. Come out of wherever you are and accept the true vine. Abide in him that you may gain eternal life. It is such a privilege, brothers and sisters, that you are here, that I am here, that we have been given this eternal life, according to 1 John chapter 5, from verse 11. He says, this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. He that has the son has life. He that does not have the son of God does not have life. That is it. So from here, we've talked about the what, we've talked about the why, Let's go to the how, which is our focus today. Abiding in Christ. How do we abide in Christ? It is only by the Holy Spirit one can abide in the true vine. It is only by the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ himself promised this. The true vine, Jesus Christ. You can only abide in, the, in, in Christ through the Holy Spirit. Now, look at the connection this way. Paint this picture. Just look at the vine here. Yeah? So that is the brand, um, the, the, the vine itself, right? The vine, the stem, the vine, Jesus Christ himself. Now look at the branches, the branches, the branches. Look at the branches. And here is the vine dresser, the father. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So the vine dresser supplies all that the vine and the branches need. And that supply is the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. The Holy Spirit is the connection of us to Jesus and his Father, God Almighty. Romans chapter 8, we have read that severally, 14, 15, and 16. You would see there that by the Holy Spirit, if we have become sons and daughters of God. So it is only by the Holy Spirit one can abide in the true vine. So first of all is by being given birth to. I want us to read uh, John chapter 1. I think these were the reference scriptures that uh, made our sisters and brothers who spoke here. John chapter 1, verse 12, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, through Jesus Christ. 
That is the entry point. I can't run away from that Romans chapter eight. Let's just see it together. Romans chapter eight from verse 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to, be, to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, God is our Father. 16, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And clearly, you know, Jesus Christ told his disciple before he departed, he said, wait, tarry ye in Jerusalem till the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And prophet Joel prophesied and say, in the latter days, which is this latter days that we are, that God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. So from the day of Pentecost, according to Acts chapter two, that is recorded in Acts chapter two, the Holy Spirit came and he has been with us. Everyone who received Jesus, and ask God to give him or her the Holy Spirit, receives the Holy Spirit. So it is only by the Holy Spirit one can abide in the true vine. So number one is to be given birth to. So that is by being born again, born of the Spirit of God. So without the Holy Spirit, one is merely a servant with no inheritance in God, as we have seen. Then number two then comes into how the Holy Spirit helps us to live our lives while here on earth. So you are born into the house, the family of God, the family of the vine, having a relationship with the Father and his son, Jesus Christ. And then the Holy Spirit is given to you, given to me to help us live our life. We are born by the Spirit into the family of God. And then how we develop relationship, our work, our service to God. So how? I said, number one, we must be born again, born of the spirit. Number two, develop your relationship according to those three levels that we talked about. Remember, level one is what? Sonship, sonship, daughterhood, sonship and daughterhood. Number two is bright. Number three is friend. In this um, order. So as a son, how do you develop your relationship? You must know your rights. Just as we read in Galatians chapter 4, a son, as long as he remains a child, a daughter, as long as he remains a child, will need people to be guiding. That's why so many deceits are going on, because many sons and daughters are not developing themselves to know their rights. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, be responsible as a son. Do what your father says. There are so many irresponsible sons and daughters. Be, learn what it means to be responsible. You have relationship is a responsibility. So you must be ready to give the responsibility the, 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 the required. Responsibility, take the responsibility that is required. You must know that you are responsible in four dimensions. First, you are responsible to yourself. And that's why when people say, oh, because they are this, they are that, they are hungry, they, are, they go and commit crime, they kill people. You are responsible for your actions. Those that have been given, the God has delegated God rules over the kingdom of men, but he delegates it to human beings. And those whom God has delegated the authority to rule, to lead in whatever office, whether as president, whether as minister, whether as a father in the family, and you abuse, you are irresponsible, and God will hold you accountable. So you are responsible, you have no excuse. I am responsible, I have no excuse. So first, you are responsible to yourself. Secondly, you are responsible to God. Thirdly, you are responsible to your family. God respects families. That's why God said, children, obey your parents in the Lord. 
honor your father and mother for this is good. He says this is, this is the first commandment with a promise, with a blessing. Number four, be responsible to your relationship to others. That's other relationships. This is how we exist as human beings, being responsible. The sense of responsibility must be planted in you. You must develop it as a Christian. This is the how. You must today take time and reflect. How am I responsible to myself? How do I hold myself accountable to the highest requirement of integrity and God's standard? Jesus is the standard. In, that, in fact, that then takes us to other points because you see some other standards that is required of you. Number three, exercise your right. How do you exercise your right? By faith, by walk. Walk and preach the kingdom of God. Do. This is the doing. Exercise your right. You know your right. You take responsibility and you exercise that right. Go and study the prodigal son again. Now you will see the good side of the prodigal son was that he knew his right. Even though he wasted it, but he knew his right. He asked the father for the portion that belonged to him. And the father gave it to him because it was his right. Will you rise up and ask your heavenly father of the portion that belongs to you? Jesus said, the works that I do, you will do also. The power to heal the sick, to raise the dead is available to you as a son and daughter of God. It is your right. It is your right to have the inheritance and the prosperity of God. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. It is your right. Number three, develop relationship as bride. The key point in being a bride is to be holy, spotless, holy. In, the, in Revelation, you would see there the bride of Jesus Christ. They said they, they wear white garments. They are clean, spotless. That's the, only, the thing, the key thing that qualifies you as a bride of Jesus. Do you want to be a bride of Jesus Christ? Be holy, spotless. Don't toy with sin and say the grace of God is available. You will not have part in that marriage supper. It is only those who are spotless, the bride of Christ, who take part in that marriage supper. How do we abide in Christ? Number four, develop your relationship as friend, as friend. So what do friends do? They go together, they do business together, they fellowship together. So how do you do that? Number one, spend time with the Holy Spirit through prayer and meditation, prayer and meditation. It is the Holy Spirit that relates us, helps us to abide in Christ, as we said. He will teach us all things. He will teach you the scripture. It will reveal things to you. Number two, under developed relationship as a friend, meditation. Meditate. You see, prayer is different from meditation. You must have time that you really, and it's good to do it most times after you have prayed or while uh, yeah, during your prayer time. Take time and just be quiet before God. Go before God and ask the Spirit of God to reveal things to you, to speak to you. Really have time with the Holy Spirit. The word that I often use here to describe this is to court, court the Holy Spirit. As a young man is courting the beautiful lady that he wants to marry, you know, during that time, he opens the car for the lady. Even though after they are married, he stops doing all that nice things. He will become a perfect gentleman. If he, if he, if he cannot sleep without calling her, 
they continue to talk, to chat. So caught the Holy Spirit through prayer, through medica meditation, fellowshipping, worshiping God. The last point, do not grieve, do not. That is do not grieve the Holy Spirit. This is very important. And there are three key ways we grieve the Holy Spirit that we must pay attention to. Number one is unforgiveness, unforgiveness. Number two is sin. Number three is disobedience. These are the key ones I want us to focus on. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. There the Bible says, do not grieve. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit for the day of redemption. So if you grieve the Holy Spirit, what will happen to you in the day of redemption? You will be cut off. You will not have communication. You will not have divine revelations. And you will not have the help and the guidance. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. So unforgiveness is one big way that we grieve the Holy Spirit, then sin, then disobedience. Unforgiveness, Matthew, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. This is where some Christians, they cannot see themselves in this light. Uh, Matthew chapter 6. Look at verses 14 and 15. I encourage you when you say the Lord's Prayer, extend to 14 and 15. Don't stop at 13. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 9 to 13 is the Lord's Prayer that we have been saying. But that prayer doesn't end there. It continues to 14 and 15. Matthew chapter 6, 14 and 15 says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. 15, but if you do not forgive men, they are trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Hello. And then disobedience. Disobedience is like the sin of witchcraft. You remember the story of Saul and several examples in the scripture. Disobedience will make you to turn away from continuing to do the will of God. Disobedience is what I emphasize here when I said, do as he says. When the Holy Spirit tells you to do something, don't argue, don't try to understand God. Note that no Christian is a servant by relationship with God, but son and or daughter. This is where I'll pause, let's hear, some contribution very quickly, and then we will pray and round it off here and uh, with some assignments that we have to take from here. Yes, Sonny, you have one minute, quickly. Yes, thank you very much, Pastor. And uh, I really appreciate uh, God for what he has done in actually teaching us uh, from the beginning of this series to the end of it all. It has been a wonderful experience. And uh, what I really take out of today's discussion is the, the fact that, that uh, God, who is the supplier of all things to the vine and the branches, as long as God keeps on supplying to the vine, we, the branches, will always benefit from it. So that's the key point I've actually taken from today's uh, discussion, that God being the supplier, being the vine dresser, and it will keep on supplying the vine. By the time it does that, we, the branches, will actually benefit from it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for that contribution. Let's quickly go to the assignment and a few questions that I have for us. So by this study and this scripture, we understand that we are members of one body. Christ is our head and of the body, his church. Everyone who has come into Christ has become member of his body. So reflect on the relationship we with, number one, your immediate family. 
reflect on the relationship. This is the assignment of abiding in Christ. Take time, reflect on the relationship with number one, your immediate family. What improvements can you make in your relationship with your immediate family? If you have a wife, what is your relationship with your wife? If you have a husband, what's your relationship with your husband? And about your children. You see, many of us, we seek to develop our relationship with Jesus, with um, the Father, as we have just been taught, and we forget that from that sense of responsibility we have talked about, we are to develop good relationship as well with one another, with our families, with fellow brothers and sisters. Jesus taught us, and again here in John chapter 15, when I said do what he says, the scripture here says we should obey his command, which you will see in verse 10. He said, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my law. Just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his law. So love is inevitable in building this relationship. That's really what we're talking about here. Praise the name of the Lord. 12, it says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. You love one another as I have loved you. Love, love one another. Family must love. Brothers and sisters must love. And we must love our neighbors as ourselves. That's the teaching of Jesus Christ. That's also that dimension of responsibility. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. And he says, and your neighbor as yourself. So number two, reflect on the relationship with your fellow brothers and sisters, the true church. Who and, who and how have you helped? Who and how have you helped? These are the ways we abide in Christ. These are the work, the things we must reflect on and do. Number three, reflect also. Is there any unforgiveness? Is there anybody you have not forgiven? Now make up your mind to forgive that brother, that sister, that person in your family, no matter what the person did, you have seen. Matthew chapter 6, 14 and 15, we must forgive. Number four of this assignment, is there any sin in your life? Have you given your life to Jesus and you're still doing, playing like a child and say the grace of God, the grace of God. Today, fornication, tomorrow it is uh, stealing, tomorrow, next tomorrow is de de deceiving people, lying, all that. Today, make up your mind to repent and ask God to forgive you. Number five, preach Christ and the kingdom of God. When last did you share Jesus with another person in whatever way, in whatever form that you can share? You remember we talk about prayer and meditation, prayer and meditation. Now, do you have a set prayer time, quiet time, as we used to call it? We don't hear those things anymore. Do you have a set time, three times in a day, that you abide in the presence of God, fellowship with the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ, your Lord, my Lord, our Master, our Savior, and the Most High, your Creator? These are the things you have to reflect and Make right out what you're going to do to improve, make improvements in all these areas. And any order that you consider is important. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. I just want to ask a question on the second point on the assignment. I didn't quite get it. The second point. So reflect on the relationship with fellow brothers and sisters who are the true church. That's the true church of God. Remember, number one was your immediate family. Now your 
brothers and sisters who are the true church of God. Who and how have you helped? Let me elaborate what the Spirit really pointed me to here. There are many people in the body who only think about others giving to them. They never think about them being a source of help. So there are two parts to it. Who have you helped? When you think about it and say, oh, I haven't helped anybody. Next question then is, how would you help somebody? So thank you for pointing me to that. Who and how have you helped somebody? That's how, who and how have you been of help? And so the assignment then is for you to put down how you're going to be a help, a blessing, pull somebody. It doesn't matter. You say, I don't have. You can help somebody. Make up your mind that you're going to impact a life in the body of Christ. That's what the assignment is about. This is how we abide in Christ. Jesus said, if you give to the least of this, my brother, you have given it to me. If you have given it to the least of this, my sisters, this child, you've given it to me. Thank you, beloved sister, for drawing me okay, to now, the five more on that question. Please go ahead. The last question was, you asked whether, how do we bear more fruits? Was it the yes. question you according, to, according to John chapter 15, I'm very specific. How do we bear okay. more, more fruit? More fruit or yes. more, much fruit? More fruit. Okay. Should I answer from this? Um, Go ahead, please. Just speak. Don't bother yeah. asking me where you should answer from. Just speak from your mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I saw, I saw different stages of bearing fruit. One is bear fruit, the other one is bearing more fruit, and the other one is bearing much fruit. Exactly. So the, the first verse one of verse two talks about, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. So that talks of fruit. So if we don't bear fruit, we are cut. And then to bear much fruit, it continues. Every branch that bears, so that it will even bear more fruit or be more fruitful. So that question of bearing more fruitful is that is the pruning that comes in. That Thank even you. if we bear, if we don't bear fruit, we'll be cut off. If we bear fruit, to bear more fruit, there will be pruning. Or pruning. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Okay. Is that okay? Are you okay with that? That's yeah. correct. That's what the scripture teaches. Thank you for staying with the scripture. And this is what the discipline we must learn to develop. Thank you very much. And you can see how rich that is. You've given us three levels of fruit. Fruit, bear fruit, bear more fruit, bear much fruit. Glory be to God. So, indeed, you have given the answer. It is, and who does the pruning? The Father, the one who supplies all that we need, does the pruning. So, pruning is important. It is the process that makes us bear more fruit. Take time and reflect on this. You want to bear more fruit? Be ready. As you bear fruit, you continue to bear more fruit, and you continue to bear much fruit as the pruning that the Father does by the supply of his spirit continues to help us. Thank you very much for that answer. Let us pray. We have heard the word. Nobody should remain a servant and all those things that must not be found in our lives. Develop your personal program of fellowshipping with God to abide in Christ and to grow thereby and bear fruit, bear much, more fruit, bear much fruit. Love is compulsory, is mandatory. Let us pray. If you have heard this teaching and you would like to give your life to Jesus, now just open your mouth and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Now 
forgive me all my sins. I repent of my sins and I ask, wash me with the precious blood of Jesus. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit to me. Fill me now with your spirit and transform my life and write my name in the Lamb's book of life. And by your spirit, help me to do your will and fulfill all your purpose for my life. Let my life bring you glory. Glorify Jesus, my Lord and Savior. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing and answering my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you're born again. Join us as we pray. Children of God, lift up your voices and cry to your Father and say, Heavenly Father, renew your spirit in me and within me. Holy Spirit of God, my helper, my teacher, the one who helps me to abide in Christ, the vine, the true vine, Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, the one who intercedes for me before the Father. I come to you and I ask now, Lord, help me. In this journey, I am a pilgrim here on earth. Help me that all your will, all your purpose for my life, I will fulfill. Teach me daily how to walk with you. According to this teaching that we have been taught, abiding in Christ, let my relationship with you, Father God, and your son, Jesus Christ, my Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ, be complete as a son, as a daughter, as a bride, as a friend of Jesus Christ. Thank you, almighty God, in Jesus' name. Please take one more minute and pray for yourself. Just pray specifically for yourself. I know there are people here who are saying, God, I want to have a deeper revelation of you. Go ahead and pray. Just ask him whatever. Ask him, ask him whatever it is. Oh, joy must manifest as we abide in the vine. It's just so beautiful. It's just so wonderful. This privilege that we have been given. First John chapter three, behold what manner of law the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Let's round up our prayer as we close now. Let's agree. Heavenly Father, we agree in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you will help us to abide in the vine, the true vine, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, the vine dresser, everything in our lives that need dressing, needs pruning, that we may grow more, that we may be better, that we may bear more fruit and much fruit as we abide in the vine, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please, whatever needs to be pruned out of our life, prune it out. Shape us by your word, shape us by your spirit, shape us by guiding and directing us on what we should do. Supply the strength that we need, oh God Almighty. Seal us. Father, we pray that in this life, we will, all of us here, fulfill your will for our lives. We will glorify you. We will manifest Jesus Christ in us and through us. Thank you, our Lord and our God. Take glory in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And we ask, Lord Jesus, that when you come to take your people, when you come to take your bride to be with you, that we will all be with you. We will all have part in that resurrection of the dead. Thank you, Father. To you be all glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Remember, Wednesday we will meet at 6 p.m. for Let Us Pray. Glory be to God. This is where we will close. And thank you so much for being part of this teaching session today. Uh, do well to uh, play back the video and then share it with others and also invite other people. If you've been blessed, I know you have been and the Almighty God bless you. Have a glorious, joy-filled week in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. <music>